Hello there, friends. Welcome again to Grace Baptist Church. This is our midweek service tonight. I think this is January the 6th, the first Wednesday night, brand new year, 2021. And uh, we do appreciate you tuning in to hear the word. And we always enjoy the comments and we read them. And thank God for you. Thank God for those who listen faithfully every time we have the service on. Hope you're having a wonderful day. We do need to pray for our country and pray for our Congress, pray for our people. Let's pray that this virus leaves us and never comes back. I think we've really seen a lot that we didn't expect to see. It's been a pretty bad year, tough year, trying year. But as we've mentioned the last few weeks, God's been faithful. He's taken good care of us. So let's pray. Father, we thank you for the time we had to be together again. Bless each one listening. I pray that the message will be a help to us as we look here at the merits of hard work, having a good testimony, giving everything we've got for you, Lord. We only have so much time. We only have so much talent and treasure. And help us to put you first, time, talent, and treasure, and use it as you would have us to use it. And Father, we'll be careful to praise you and give you honor and glory. For it's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Friends, if you have your Bible, we're going back to where we left off in Proverbs chapter number 12. We've been looking the last couple of weeks at the merits of hard work. That's one of the characteristics God really commands is a hard worker. We know way back in the Garden of Eden, God told Adam, Adam, you're going to have to earn your living by the sweat of your brow. And uh, we know that God commands a hard worker. And he says in one place, always remember this, I believe it's the book of Colossians. He says, don't just be working hard as men pleasers with eye service. In other words, just when the boss is watching. He said, work hard all the time because our Lord is watching. And we're to be pleasing him. So we read in chapter 12 of Proverbs 1 through 9. And we're going to finish it up tonight. But we'll go back and review for those who may not have been able to hear the last couple of weeks on Wednesday night Bible study. But it says here in Proverbs 12, 1. Whoso loveth instruction loveth knowledge. But he that hateth reproof is brutish. A good man obtaineth favor of the Lord, but a man of wicked devices will he condemn. A man shall not be established by wickedness, but the root of the righteous shall not be moved. Then he talks about the virtuous woman. She is a crown to her husband, but she that maketh the shamed is a rottenness in his bones. Talking about the value of a good relationship between husband and wife. If you have a husband and a wife <clears throat> that love each other and support each other and pray for each other and try to build each other up, God will use that to make that marriage strong and to make that marriage blessed of God. And then he goes on to say in verse five, the thoughts of the righteous are right. You know, the Bible teaches as a man thinketh in his heart, so is he. You can tell a lot about what we've been doing by our thought life. What do we dwell on? What do we think about? Sooner or later, the thought life is going to come out. It's going to come out into our regular world of activity. So if a righteous person is thinking good thoughts, they're going to be blessed with good life. But then he says the counsels of the wicked are deceit. Don't listen to that wicked person. They'll pull you away. They'll get your focus off of God. Verse six, the words of the wicked are to lie and wait for blood. I mean, they're going to kill somebody to get five dollars. Terrible. I mean, they're just planning some kind of a mischievous event. They're waiting to trap somebody. But then the mouth of the upright shall deliver them. The wicked are overthrown. 
and are not, but the house of the righteous shall stand. Talking about the wicked. They're not going to be able to last. They're on a shaky foundation. But thank God we have the foundation of the Lord Jesus Christ. We've got a solid foundation. When the storm comes and when the valleys are the travel of our life, we know the mountaintop's coming ahead. We'll be back on that mountaintop. And we know that that storm's going to clear and the sun's going to shine again. And it might be low tide in your life tonight, but high tide's coming again. Then he goes on to say this. Verse number eight. Proverbs 12, 8. A man shall be commended according to his wisdom, but he that is of a perverse heart shall be despised. He that is despised and hath a servant is better than he that honoreth himself and lacketh bread. A righteous man regardeth the life of his beast, but the tender mercies of the wicked are cruel. I believe you can tell a whole lot about a person. By the way, they treat animals. By the way, they treat their pets. How many of you love dogs and have a dog as a pet? <laughs> I've got one. I just love that little fella. He's my little buddy. I call him Bobo. He's a boxer. And uh, cats, I love little cats too. A lot of people don't like cats that like dogs. And a lot of people that like dogs don't like cats. You know, it's a mixture. I know so many people who like cats but despise a dog. Well, I love dogs. Somebody jokingly said one time, you can tell who loves you the most, your wife or your dog. If you put them both in the trunk of the car and leave them for about an hour and ride around and then open the trunk and see how your wife treats you <laughs> and see how your dog treats you. He'll be licking your hand. Your wife going to let you have it. <laughs> I'm just kidding that. Don't ever do that. Love your wife. She'll love you back. But anyway, we know that Solomon's the writer. And we know that Solomon is trying to teach his son, Rehoboam, that if you'll just work with the people, use a little common sense, love them, pray for them, help them, serve them, They'll be loyal to you the rest of your life. But if you mistreat them, they won't put up with it. They won't follow you. And we know that Rehoboam didn't listen to his daddy. He treated the people pretty bad. He said, if you think my dad Solomon was rough, I'll be 10 times worse than him. And boy, they just split 10 northern tribes and two southern tribes. He had a civil war in the country over this. So he should have listened to this wonderful counsel that Solomon has given him in the book of Proverbs. So we see here that a good man, in verse 2, he gets favor from the Lord. A wicked man, he, he's going to be condemned. He'll be judged sooner or later. It's called the law of sowing and reaping. Whatever we sow, we reap. If we do good things, guess what? Good things come back. If we do bad things, bad things come back. A man shall not be established on wickedness. In other words, if you're wicked, there's not much foundation for you to stand. You're going to be blown about by everything that comes your way. You need some help. You need the Lord. And he will receive you. You say, preacher, I've gone too far. He would never love me. Oh, he does love you. If he loved David, he loved you. Do you know David committed adultery with a man's wife and then had the husband murdered, Uriah? And the woman's name is Bathsheba. He tried to hide it for a whole year, but you know, he couldn't get peace in his heart. He cried until he couldn't cry anymore. And then finally, he said that he went to the Lord and confessed his sin after a year. A whole year running from God. That's a miserable existence for a Christian is to be out of fellowship with God. You know, the Lord took David right back in. And the Lord washed him and cleansed him and forgave him. Now, he paid for it dearly. David had a lot of trouble in the family after that. 
But do you know that God continued to bless David as a king? He didn't take his kingdom away because David could sin just like anybody else, but he also was a tender-hearted man and he could repent as much as not more than anybody else too. And he repented. He was sorry for what he had done. And God blessed him for that. He blesses us when we come to him. And so Jesus even put it like this in Matthew 7. If you build your life on the word of God, then when the rain comes and the storms blow, you're going to stand. You're not going to be blown down. You're not going to be destroyed. Why? Your life's built on the solid rock of the Lord Jesus. But if a person's not built on Christ, they have no help. They have no foundation. I'm glad that we can turn to the Lord. Last week, we looked at that virtuous woman who loves her husband. She's always building him up, trying to help him. Because in reality, if she helps him, he's going to help her. And the same is true between a husband and wife. If he's always nagging his wife and putting her down, it's going to come back to haunt him. But if he loves his wife, appreciates his wife, lifts his wife up, guess what? He's going to be blessed in return. And so that's why he says here, a virtuous woman's like a, a crown on the head of her husband. But the one who makes that husband look bad that one who makes that husband ashamed or calls him down, puts him down, is like rottenness to the bones. No, she is destroying her own husband from the inside out, and it's going to hurt her too. Everybody working together is the key. And that's why he talks about a virtuous woman. The word virtuous means a strong army a band of men, a host that support that husband as he follows the leadership of God. She comes to his rescue when Satan is trying to attack her husband or her family. He comes to her rescue when Satan is trying to attack her. She's down. She's discouraged. What's the husband to do? Try to lift her up. Right? Try to encourage her. And so when we do that with our family, with our friends, there's no telling how much God will use this. A kind word will build them up and get them back in a good frame of mind and help them. That's called godly support. That's called encouragement. And friends, you'll never be able to win others to Christ until you win them to yourself. You have to let others know that Hey, we're no better than you are. We're all in the same boat. We've all sinned. But thank God we've got a Savior. And he can wash you just like he's done me. He can forgive you and save you. Thank God for the virtuous woman. She's a crown to her husband's head. Thank God for that husband who loves his wife like Christ loved the church. Because she is going to show love in return. I'm... Gave this last week a little poem as I was finishing up. To keep your marriage brimming with love in the loving cup. Whenever you're wrong, admit it. Whenever you're right, shut up. <laughs> that is some good advice. <laughs> That's some good advice. We could make them look bad, but we don't want to do that. Verse 5, the thoughts of the righteous are right. But the counsel of the wicked are deceit. The godly person thinks good things. But the wicked person, always planning something bad, mischievous, to hurt somebody, to harm somebody, to kill them, even with words of destruction. And, you know, you can really hurt somebody just with your words. It happens. It happens. And so that's what we're going to pick up from where we left off. Told about J.C. Penney last week in 1929, the man was unstable. His business was about to go under. J.C. Penney was admitted to a hospital. He thought he was going to die. And as he lay there thinking he wouldn't make it through the night, he heard some singing down in a little chapel room below him in the hall. And he got to tuning in and listening, and he hadn't heard this song 
and t until he was a little boy, way back when he was a little boy, and he used to hear it when his mama would take him to church. No matter what may be the test, God will take care of you. And it changed his heart. And he came back to the God of which his mother had brought him to as a little boy. And God used him. And his company grew. And he left the hospital. And he, it was a changed man. Who did that? God did. God can do it for you. God can do it for me. So we pick it up here tonight in verse number six. The words of the wicked are to lie and wait for blood, but the mouth of the upright shall deliver them. Our thoughts do matter. At the very least, they must not be deceitful. A person's thoughts determines what he or she says and does. And the words of the wicked person are like deadly ambushes. They're going to hurt and harm and destroy. The wicked person can kill you with words of destruction. But that righteous person can save you from destruction. They can rescue you from peril. And there's some people that can come in contact with you and lift you up to a higher plane just by the words they say to you. Maybe you're having a terrible day. Nothing is going right. Pick up the phone, talk to that person, and they'll always have something good to say. And you hang up that phone, and, man, everything's all right. You feel a lot better. But on the other hand, there are some people that when you talk to them, you may be having a wonderful day already. Everything's going great. You're rejoicing in the goodness of God. But when you talk to that person, they just have a way of destroying your joy and your happiness, and you can't wait to hang the phone up. What's the difference? There is tremendous power in the words that we use. Good words produce good results. Bad words always produce bad results. Then look with me, if you will, at verse number seven. Proverbs 12, seven, the wicked are overthrown and are not, but the house of the righteous shall stand. The poet says the wicked are no more among us, but the house of the righteous still stands. This means that all wicked people in our day, some who may be our antagonist, they're actually living on borrowed time. Their days are numbered, but the days of the righteous cannot be counted. He's saying that he's going to bless that righteous person. But that person who is only living for some kind of wickedness is going to come back to harm. The evil, the lawless person, they're going to fall to pieces under the strain of life and nobody's there to pick them up. Think about that. We need help. There are times when we fall. There are times when life just floors us. We didn't see this problem coming. We didn't expect that to happen. And things that happen so quickly. But we need the Lord there. He'll pick you up. We need the Almighty God. He's going to help that righteous person who's under pressure. He's going to give them strength. He's going to lift them up and carry them. Thank God for our Heavenly Father. He looks down and helps us in time of need. Thank God for our precious Savior who prays for us every day is our great high priest in heaven, the, the Lord Jesus Christ. And then thank God for the magnificent Holy Spirit of God. He lives inside of us. Our body is the temple of the Holy Spirit of God. He guides us. He cheers us. As we travel down the portals of life, the Holy Spirit is right in there with us. Our body is his temple. Then um, verse number eight. A man shall be condemned according to his wisdom, but he that is of a perverse heart, he's going to be despised. I mean, everybody respects and celebrates a person who has that understanding, that great wisdom that comes from the Lord because they know that person can help them. That person can give them some wise advice, but not much respect goes to that one that's heart's bent on mischief and they're always out to hurt. <laughs> they may try to help in time of need, but 
truly, it's hard to respect somebody who's trying to hurt others, who's trying to pull people down, who's trying to gossip and tear others up. Listen to how this verse has been interpreted by others. Verse number eight, a person who talks sense is honored, <laughs> but airheads are held in contempt. <laughs> airheads are held in contempt. One writer puts it like this, a sensible person wins admiration, but a warped mind is always despised. He that is despised and hath a servant is better than he that honoreth himself. <laughs> Think about that, friends. And lacketh bread. Solomon says here, it's much better to be an average hard worker, even if you have, to have somebody help you as a business partner than to try to make out like you're Mr. Big Shot and be starving for lack of work. Be that person that God has created you to be. Be that person God has designed you to be. And you're going to be blessed of the Lord. You don't have to be somebody else. You can relax and just be who God made you to be. Enjoy your life. If you look out in front of you, you're going to get jealous. If you look behind you, you're going to be proud of those who hadn't made it this far. But if you look up to the Lord, you're going to be delighted. He's going to help you. Enjoy your life. And when you try to pretend to be what you're not, that's when it gets awful tough. and hard to be somebody we really are not created to be kind of reminds me of a commercial used to come on years ago. I can remember it had a man in a suit and he was sitting behind a big desk and there was windows behind him overlooking a big city. He looked so important sitting there with that suit. He's acting as if he's taking a very important phone call and all of a sudden the windows in the background start rising up <laughs> and only a picture posted on a garage door were the windows. That's all they were, was just a big picture. And the garage door goes up, and the wife, who's on the outside, comes in, and she looks at him and says, why in the world are you putting on such a big show out here in the garage as if you're a big wheel in a high-rise office building? In reality, he was just an average person sitting at a desk, and a chair out in his garage. But he wanted to make out like he was important. Maybe you've seen that commercial. It hadn't been on in a while, but it's hilarious. His wife was never impressed. She snapped at him, walked past him, went into the house. Heard a joke one time about a man. He'd just gotten a brand new office job, and it was his first day on the job, and he's sitting behind the desk wondering what the future held for him. Boy, he's going to conquer the world now. And he was sitting there thinking about how great he was and the new job and the new position and the new desk. There was a knock at the door, and he thought, well, I've got to make a good impression. This is my first day on the job. So he grabbed the telephone on the desk, and he started talking as if he was talking to a very important person in a very important phone call. So he stopped for a moment. He shouted, at the person at the door to come on in. And so the young man at the door came on in the office and this man, he just kept talking as if he's given some important advice to somebody who was making a very important decision. Well, the whole time he's talking on the phone, the young man just stood there and watched and waited patiently. And finally, after talking for about five minutes and acting as if he was so important he paused for a moment and he asked the young man to have a seat while he finished up this very important call. <laughs> the young man said, oh, well, just take your time, sir. I'm just the telephone repair man. I'm just here to hook up the new phone for you. <laughs> oh, no, he'd been called. Trying to play Mr. Big Shot, the phone wasn't even working. And he was trying to make out like he was talking to the president. Friends, God loves you just the way you are. He has a plan for you, and he will help you accomplish that plan when you follow the Lord. Be who God created you to be. You'll be fulfilled. 
You'll be joyful. You'll be happy. And you're always going to be gifted for the task God called you to do. You don't have to impress anybody as long as you're trying to do what God has called you to do. Amen. Glory to God. Thank you so much for tuning in this Wednesday night. Hope you have a great week. Tune in Sunday at 10. If you're not able to come and be with us, we'll be back 10 o'clock Sunday morning. And I hope you have a great week. Let's finish in prayer. Father, thank you, Lord, for the precious word of God. We love it. It helps us so many times in life to know how to handle ourselves, to be more like Jesus, to build up those around us instead of tear them down, to show kindness instead of rudeness. And I pray that you bless each one listening tonight. Give them a special blessing for tuning in. Give them the anointing and the power of this precious Holy Spirit who lives inside of us. And we'll thank you and praise you. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. Thank you so much, friends, for joining us. And may God richly bless you.